It gives me immense pleasure to introduce the resource person and the chairperson of this session. Dr. Savitika Day joined the Department of Economics at Assam University, Silja in October 2008. She obtained her PhD in Economics from Assam University in 2013. Her teaching areas include microeconomics, monetary economics, public economics, human development. Her research areas are poverty, vulnerability, rural livelihoods, migration, remittances, and food security. She has reputed journals such as Indian Journal of Labor Economics, Poverty and Public Policy, Indian Journal of Agricultural Economics, and uh, Indian Journal of Human Development, among others. She has successfully guided several PhD and MPhil scholars, and she is a live member of the Northeastern Economic Association and the Indian Society of Agricultural Economics. Thank you. Thank you. So we are we uh, before uh, the presenter presents the paper. It is our proud privilege to have Dr. Shamalika Day from our university. She has taken all the pain to be with us today here, and will be enlightened if she speaks some on startups now. A warm welcome to everyone. At the very outset, I would like to thank the organizing committee of the seminar for giving me an opportunity to come here today and interact with the presenters and the students and the staff of this college. Uh, the seminar on startups could not have come perhaps at a more opportune moment because, given the policy that the government seems to be following, both at the central and the state level, it looks as if that in the near foreseeable future, in the future, the startup system is the government is going to rely on the startup ecosystem as the main source for employment generation in India. And this great euphoria that has been generated is not without its merit because many of the startups that have started in India. They have actually grown to become unicorns, and they have demonstrated that this can be a viable and alternative model for employment generation. The in recent times, or on the to, to be more precise, on the twenty fourth of April, India earned the distinction of whether that's a good distinction or a dubious distinction. It's difficult to say, but it earned the distinction of becoming the most populous country in the world, overtaking China. Now, this can have both the advantages and the disadvantages. Talking about the disadvantages first, this huge population this places tremendous strain on our resources, particularly land. For a very long time, the agricultural census data has shown us that there has been a problem of fragmentation and marginalization of land holdings. And the rural areas, 75% of the farmers are actually marginal land holders. So, with land holding of less than one hectare, this clearly cannot be a sustainable source of livelihood because the income that is generated from one hectare of land is not sufficient enough, in, uh, you know, sufficient enough to sustain earnings and employment throughout the year. This is also going to the, this huge population also places tremendous strain on our health system, the demand for health system, on our transportation and various other services. So. This is seen as a disadvantage from one side. But on the other side, it is said that India not only has the largest population, but it also has the largest young population. It is the youngest country in the world with the mean age of an average Indian at 29 years. And half of the Indian population is actually less than 25 years of age. So it is said that this could open the opportunity for transforming India from a low income country to a high income country via the door of demographic dividend. So what is the demographic dividend? The demographic dividend is the benefit or the acceleration in economic growth that comes about as a result of the population structure taking a particular shape. And we seem to be in a, the government is planning this Amrit Khan that when we complete 100 years of independence in 2047, the country will be transformed from a low income country to a high income country. And one of the ways in which, one of the driving factors which is going to contribute probably to this transformation is this demographic dividend. 
because the young population has it's also an aspiring population mind you so in last winter i remember i was having a conversation with a vegetable seller in sichuan and i was asking him that i hum ye ye the shobji ta kome na keno moshu mein jo la seasonal shobji mane the full gobi bandh gobi ka dam kam chala tha then he told us that, that madam nowadays actually the young generation is not interested in cultivation they want to so there is a supply problem so whatever is being produced in the villages it is by the contribution that is coming from the elders but the young population they are looking for other opportunities white collar jobs so this shows that we not only have a young country we have an aspirational country that wants to transform itself and wants to go into jobs that are not non traditional in nature so this young population would mean that they are in the working age they will earn and national income is nothing but the sum total of the income of every individual so when you have a working age population so what happens is that when they work they are going to contribute to the economic growth of the country and probably a 5 trillion economic could be a reality but how much income this working age population is willing to is able to generate will depend upon the kind of opportunities that they are given now if what we want we okay the young generation is not interested in agriculture so they are interested in something else but unless and until you give them alternative or employment opportunities with data becoming more cheaper than water then why are we taking time on the internet so the key challenge of living in a democratic dividend is to actually train and skill our youth so that viable and sustainable employment opportunities are generated and when it comes to this need of the hour of generating employment opportunities this thing the startup the startups and entrepreneurship development this is the way forward because in india for a very long time we have failed to deliver on the us model of development that we will transform excess labor from agriculture to industry but now the time seems to be opportune maybe not large to large scale industrialization but to small scale industrialization and small scale business this is the time when we can transform the economic landscape of the country but then the real challenge startup business when someone starts a starts up a startup he generates employment not only for himself but for others but the real challenge is to actually generate employment in the rural areas startups cannot be the privilege of only a handful of people who are living in the urban areas who have information who have access to capital through finance and so on given that 67% of india's population still lives in the rural areas the idea is how to actually generate employment for that youth population so the demographic dividend will not come from urban areas the actual demographic dividend is going to come from the rural areas where most of the population is residing so and there cannot be one size fits all so a startup model that is So, a startup model that may be implementable in a place like Delhi or in Mumbai or in Guwahati, for that matter, in the urban center, is not something that is going to work in the villages, because a startup essentially means incorporation as a company. But this company model is not going to work in the rural areas. So, we need to try alternative sort models, such as the rejuvenation of the cooperative system or through self-help group. And this should come. This should start early at the school level. I have seen that in the Central the Central schools, they have a compulsory paper on physical education. They have to motivate children that they need to take care of their health and so on. So we don't have too many Central schools in the villages. So it would the onus would be on the on the state government to start this idea of incubation and entrepreneurship development right from the beginning. So from the class nine till onwards, there is a separate paper on entrepreneurship development. It will be a practical oriented paper. It's not something that's going to be useful. So, what are the scope for entrepreneurship development? What are the facilities available? If someone wants to start a business, how to get a loan? How to know what is the sources of demand and so on? Because just ending, starting a startup and then ending up tomorrow is not the solution. So, we need viable business models that will work, that will be that will be based on local region, local resources, and there cannot be a one size fits all. So, a district. entrepreneurship development program which focuses on the availability of local labor the type of labor that is available the type of market and the type of resources that are available within the district that is when inclusiveness in startups can be obtained 
Otherwise, we'll end up with a system where we have certain hubs in the state, maybe Guwahati, maybe Silchar, where we started our businesses flourishing. But then this inequality that in incomes and in living standards that we have been seeing will continue. Because ultimately, when we talk about startups and employment generation, that is not an end in itself. It is a step towards a further goal to actually ensure inclusiveness in the growth process and everybody can benefit from the growth process. And this can happen only when our youths are provided with the skills and the training and the information to make it happen, not only for themselves, but also for people around them. So since time is limited, I will not waste much time on, on this. And uh, how many papers do we have? Seven members. The total presenters are present. Okay. And we have how, many, how much time? We have how much time? Seven. All? No, no, they are in meet, meet. Some are some are present online, some are present online. Okay. We are finishing up first. Uh, like. So we have maybe less than one hour yeah. and seven presidents. Yes. So if we divide it equally, uniformly, that would be uh, six, 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 60 six, by seven, roughly seven, seven minutes. Okay. okay, so what we can do since we're short of time, we can allow the presentations to take place. I'll appeal to all presenters to stick to the time so that everyone gets a chance to to, uh, to share their, their papers. And then we will have a question answer session at the end. I think we, should, we can go by that if everyone agrees. Yes. Okay. So, who's the first presenter? Uh, Atul Kumar Pond. Yes. Everyone, uh, respected chairperson, uh, respected reporters, uh, older teaching staffs, and all the participants, and my dear students. Uh, uh, the name of my paper is uh, Role of Microfinance in Women Entrepreneurship. And empirical study. Uh, the paper is generally prepared by four members that is Otul Kumar Palsar, Otul Dolan, myself, and Dr. Pavan Dhawar, and Lakhajit Mora. First of all, I like to come to the introduction that is. Uh, microfinance. Microfinance is one of the participants in the field of rural and urban economic development. It helps the large marginalized section of the society which have been excluded earlier from the development process due to unavailability from banking access and credit facilities. A proper development is not possible without the inclusion of this section of society into the mainstream by providing them with equitable opportunities and resources for their business requirement. Therefore, an approach towards poverty elevation is based on the forming of self-help groups at the grassroots level. Self-help groups have to improve the savings habit of the poor members. It also demonstrates the strength of unity among the members. Through SSG, mainly the women can help themselves for self-employment through banking credit facilities. SSD is the best approach for reaching out, out to the rural poor women and organizing them for small savings. Now I'd like to go to the next part, that is objectives of the study. Um, generally, there are three objectives. First one is to study the demographic profile of the women SSD's members in the Ram Krishna Nagar block of Karimgas district. Second one is to study the relationship between annual incomes and loans taken by the women entrepreneurs. Third one is to study the effectiveness of microfinance uh, contribution through SSD for the reduction of poverty and economic development in the study area.
the next part is hypothesis of the study generally uh, we have taken two hypotheses first one is there is no significant difference between the annual incomes of the respondents before and after getting the loans from the microfinance second one is there is no significant level of contribution by the microfinance to SSGs in reduction of poverty and economic development Now I like to come to the methodology. The study was conducted by the survey method. The data were collected from primary and secondary sources. Primary data, primary data were collected from interviews and questionnaires. Secondary data were collected from books, journals and websites. Five samples of SSGs are selected from Ram Krishna Nagar block in Kailas district, namely Matara, Jivan Juki, Raj Lakshmi, New Colony and uh, uh, Fakua Bajar SSGs. Among them, 75 respondents were selected by simple random sampling method for the purpose of study. The data collected from the respondents were analyzed by statistical tools such as tables, ratios, percentages, and chi square test. Limitation of the study. The study is being conducted in very short period, that is from 1st July 2022 to 10 February 2023. The study is limited to one block, that is Ram Krishna Nagar block in Karimgans district. The sample size is confined to 75 samples only. Due to the ignorance of the respondents, uh, due to uh, uh, ignorance, uh, the respondents did not openly provide their real socioeconomic position in the community. It also found lack of awareness among women and this was mainly due to poor economic condition, illiteracy, and ignorance. Next part, please. Next. Now, I like to directly come to the table one. That is demographic profile of the respondents. Uh, the above table shows that there are five SSG groups under study. This SSG group consists of 50 members. Uh, it shows the age of respondents. Findings. Next. In findings were an observation uh, on observation the annual income of the respondents before taking loan are uh, thirty percent between ten thousand rupees ten thousand to twenty thousand. 20% less than rupees 10,000, 12% between 20,000 to 30,000, and 6% rupees 30% and above. In findings 2, which compares to finding 1, the annual income of the respondents after taking loan has increased. This can uh, be presented in the following way. Annual income of the respondents above 30,000 is 28% and 16% more than rupees 40,000, whereas 22% more than 20,000 and 9% more than rupees. 10,000. In finding 3, double 7, the calculated value of chi square, that is 2.419355, is less than the tabulated value of chi square, that is 9.488. So there is no significant level of contribution of microfinance to SSGs in poverty reduction and economic development of the respondents. Um, number 4, from the table number 8, the computed value of chi square is less than the table value of chi square. Uh, as the calculated value is uh, 3.462963 and we got the tabulated value that is uh, 21.026. Therefore, we can conclude that there is no significant difference in annual income before taking loan of the uh, respondents. Uh, on table 9, the computed value of chi square is 10.63672 is less than the tabulated value that is 21.026. Uh, six. Therefore, from here also we can conclude that there is no significant difference in annual income after taking loan of the uh, by the respondents. Uh, therefore, suggestion and uh, recommendation. Suggestion: Professional training programs should be arranged. The government should expand their institutional credit facilities, uh, especially in the rural areas. Proper marketing arrangements should be given. Technical support should be provided to the women entrepreneurships. Field supervision programs should be arranged. New technology should be uh, 
uh, used in the study area and uh, it should be provided certain special incentives and uh, concessions for the women entrepreneurs. Thank you. With this, I'd like to conclude my. Okay, thank you, Mr. Paul. Uh, we'll have the question answer session at the end because time is limited. Uh, sir, okay. well, Ma'am, it's a joint. joint okay. Um, we could not print the yeah. So, okay. Mr. Dolly, thank you. All right, so let us call the next uh, presenter, uh, Dr. Jyotika Vedak. Not present. Not present? Okay. Then the next presenter is Mrs. Radishri Dhanikar. And the topic she will be presenting on is Women Empowerment, Empowerment of Women. Oh, okay. No, my name is That's all. That's all. So, my small introduction is youth, uh, youth is the future of uh, our country or state. Swami Vivekananda believed that youth, if youth is the foundation of a country and they are a great asset to any nation as they are full of energy, enthusiasm, and innovative ideas. Hence, their development denotes the development of the uh, country or the region or the state as a group. Educating and training the youth um, person effectively encourage, uh, and encouraging them for entrepreneurship are a great asset of improving the economy of a nation. The northeastern region is full of opportunities, the region and rich with the various natural resources. But despite of being very rich with its natural resources, the reason for the backwardness of the region is the lack of the quality attributes. Who has properly utilized the resources? <coughs> Unfortunately, entrepreneurship is not much preferred by the young person, rather than they are much more inclined towards the government or the private jobs. Hence, a big number of the youth of, of today are unemployed, especially in the northeastern region of India. So, youth training for the development of the northeast, northeast in order to overcome the job oriented uh, mindset of the youth uh, in the northeast of the country, it is necessary to train them in favor of the entrepreneurship. They need to be uh, told about the advantages they are enjoyed on becoming entrepreneurs. The emergence of youth entrepreneurship in different sectors of Northeast India is expected to bring economic development in a different uh, in a significant way. In order to give opportunity to rise enterprises, there are some non-profit organizations involved in providing institutional support to aspiring enterprise and entrepreneurs. They help young entrepreneurs by importing training and ex extending credits. Entrepreneurs play a major role in capital formation. They mobilize the idle savings of the common people. Entrepreneurs build, uh, build enterprises which require people to be, uh, to be employed for getting the jobs. With the entrepreneur, uh, with the uh, with time, entrepreneurs provide direct and indirect employment opportunities to more and more people. Entrepreneurs does help in economic growth. Setting up of business enterprises lead to the development of road transport, education, health, entertainment, etc. Promoting a balanced region and development. 
Then the problem and prospect of youth entrepreneurs in the northeastern region. The main problems of the entrepreneurs in the northeastern regions are the low capital formation. Without an adequate capital, entrepreneurs is meaningless. Capital formation depends on the per capita income, saving habits, and the expansion of the financial system. The next, the lack of industrialization. Proper industrial development depends on the entrepreneurial abilities. Northeastern uh, people do not possess at, uh, <coughs> abilities. As a, as a result, the region is suffering from uh, slow industrial development in spite of huge potentialities of natural resources. Inadequate infrastructure. The basic infrastructural facilities are not sufficient in the northeastern region. As for, uh, as for example, the communication roadways, power supply, etc. Without a sound infrastructure base, the region cannot develop various industries on the basis of the resources. Lack of market. Proper market has not yet developed in the uh, northeastern region. Um, uh, in the northeastern region. Lack of credit facilities. Credit facilities of the region are not easy. This is because there is no banking coverage in many parts of the region. The banks are not offering financial help to the small and the cottage industries. And then there are some prospects of the entrepreneurs. Uh, the first one is the sericulture. Sericulture is an new based labor intensive industry and can provide ample scope for the generation of employment opportunities and economic upliftment of the entrepreneurs. The con uh, continual climatic condition of the region gives rise to immense possibilities for the development of sericulture. Uh, for example, uh, Eri, Muga, Kashar, etc. The handloom and the handicrafts. The handloom and handicraft development also have scope in the region. The beauty of cane and bamboo work and the traditional mecha chadar shawl garments to great demand at the national and international level. Horticulture <laughs> in the northeastern region also produces <coughs> and has the potential for agro horticulture. <laughs> the different <coughs> varieties of fruits, for, uh, uh, fruits are apple, uh, papaya, <coughs> and uh, uh, lychee, banana, jackfruit, etc. The horticulture is one of uh, one area where there is high prospects for engineers to start food processing units. Floriculture. Floriculture is yet another area where there is a potentiality with a suitable agroclimatic condition. There is good scope for the development of fat flowers, ornamental plants, flowering plants, etc. But for all these areas need to develop a package of practices and post finance technologies so that their quick dispatch to the market will be ensured. Lastly, my conclusion is uh, this: uh, that there are ample opportunities of small business in northeastern region. For the government, it is important to realize the goal of small business owners uh, uh, will be to gain such employ. Such young entrepreneurs may not be financial assistant, may not need financial assistance, but they will need proper marketing and legal assistance in order to sustain themselves. Youth entrepreneurship development is the key factor to fight against unemployment, poverty, and to prepare them for globalization in order to achieve economic progress of the country. Mm -hmm. कमार्स एक टपिक देख लगभग 
যে এনভায়রনমেন্ট টু ওমেন মানে ক্ষমতায়নে নারী তো এই বিষয়টা শোনার সঙ্গে সঙ্গে একটু জাস্ট একটু বুঝ হয়ে যাচ্ছে না বললে একটু অসুবিধা হবে কেন আমি এখানে কথা বলছি সেটা বলে নিতে হবে যখন আমি পিএইচডি করেছিলাম তখন আমার বিষয়টা ছিল মানে আমার আমার বিষয়টা ছিল ফেমিনিজমের উপর এবং ফেমিনিজমের উপর নারী চেতনাবাদের উপর যখন আসে কথাগুলো তখন এনভায়রনমেন্টটা একেবারে কান কান দিয়ে মাথা আসে যেরকম সেরকম ভাবে চলেই আসে তাই একটু সাহস করে বললাম যে বিষয়টা বলেই ফেলি তাই বলার মতো আপনারা সবাই জানেন এখানে গুরুজনেরা বসে আছেন তারা অভিজ্ঞ সাংঘাতিক ভাবেই জানেন সেখানে আমার করে আলাদা করে কিছু বলার নেই কিছু ভাবনা কিছু উপলব্ধি যেগুলি আমি বুঝি এবং বিশ্বাস করি সেগুলি সঠিক করে তুলবো আপনাদের আমি এটা মনে করি যে সেমিনার মানে হচ্ছে আদান প্রদান একটা ডায়লগ একটা ধীরালাপ প্রত্যেকের সঙ্গে চলে যেটা তাই সেই এম্পাওয়ারমেন্ট ওমেন এটা বাংলায় করলে নারীর ক্ষমতায়ন এবং ক্ষমতায়নে নারী এটা বলার আগে যে কথাটা একটু ছুটে যাচ্ছি সেটা হচ্ছে সাহিত্যের ছাত্রী তো এটা যদি বাংলায় একটু না বলি তাহলে কেমন লাগে পড়তে পড়তে ধরে ফেলতে হবে পরস্পরের শক্তপুক্ত হাত ঠিক কোথাও পৌঁছতে হবে তেমনটা নয় একটা ভেঙে বেরোনোর ইচ্ছে ব্যাস এর মানে কি যখন ক্ষমতায়নটা আসে মেয়েদের ক্ষেত্রে তখন ক্ষমতায়নটা একটা প্রক্রিয়া হিসাবে আসে এখন ক্ষমতায়নের প্রক্রিয়ার সঙ্গে অতপ্রত ভাবে জড়িয়ে থাকে যে বিষয়টা সেটা হচ্ছে আমাদের সমাজ সমাজটা কোন সমাজ সমাজটা হচ্ছে পুরুষতান্ত্রিক সমাজ পুরুষ নয় তন্ত্র সিস্টেম যেটা ইংরেজিতে বলে এই সিস্টেমকে যতক্ষণ ভাবে আমাদের নারীদের মেয়েদের জীবনের মধ্যে একেবারে আহ অস্তিতে মজ্জাতে জড়িয়ে থাকবে তখন ক্ষমতায়ন যখন বিষয়টা আসবে তখন অনেকগুলো প্রশ্ন চিহ্ন একটার পর একটা থেকে যাবে কেননা ক্ষমতায়নটা যখন আসে তখনই আসে যে মেয়েদের নিজের মতো করে সিদ্ধান্ত নিতে হবে এবং আজকের পৃথিবীতে দাঁড়িয়েও আমি একদম মানে হলপ করে বলতে পারি যে সব মেয়েদের সিদ্ধান্ত নেওয়ার ক্ষমতা আজও হয়ে ওঠেনি কিভাবে হয়ে ওঠেনি সেটা বলি আমি এই কিছুদিন আগে আমার ডিজিটাল ডিসার্ভেশন সেমিনার দিতে গিয়েছিলাম যাদবপুর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে কিছুদিন মানে আমাকে আপনারা জানেন সেটা কাজ করতে গেলে বিভিন্ন আমাদের রিসার্চ করতে হয় সেখানে গিয়ে আমি যখন বিভিন্ন জায়গায় আমি খোঁজ নিলাম সেখানে দেখলাম যারা কারখানায় কাজ করেন মহিলারা তারা সারাদিন ধরে কাজ করে যান এবং দিনের শেষে ওরা টাকা পায় পাঁচশো টাকা এবং সেই জায়গায় যখন পুরুষরা কাজ করছেন সেখানেই পেয়ে যাচ্ছেন এক হাজার টাকা টাকার ক্ষেত্রে প্রথমত ভাগ হয়ে যাচ্ছে তারপর যখন আমি একটু নিচের দিকে নামছি যখন আমি পিএইচডি করেছিলাম তখন আমাদের বিভিন্ন ভাবে রেড লাইট এরিয়াতে যেতে হয়েছিল সেখানে গিয়ে যখন আমি দেখলাম সেখানেও দেখলাম দেহ ব্যবসায়ীরা যারা আছেন তারা কিন্তু নিজের ইচ্ছায় যে কাজটা করছেন না অন্যের ইচ্ছায় করছেন সেখানেও টাকার ক্ষেত্রে একটা ভাগ হয়ে আসছে সেটা চলে যাচ্ছে যিনি ক্ষমতার কেন্দ্রে আছেন তার কাছে এর মানে কি সর্বত্র কোনো না কোনো জায়গায় একটা শোষণ হচ্ছে আর একটু নিচের দিকে নামি যখন আমি পিএইচডি করছি করেছিলাম তখন বিভিন্ন আমাদের বরাক দিনের বিভিন্ন চা বাগানের ক্ষেত্রে যেতে হয়েছে এই রামকৃষ্ণনগর করিমগঞ্জ শিলচর সব জায়গায় যেতে হয়েছে সেখানে গিয়ে যখন আমি খবর নিলাম তখন দেখলাম চা বাগানের মহিলারা নট অনলি পিএইচডি সময়ের কথা বলছি না আজকের পৃথিবীতেও তারা কিন্তু টাকার ক্ষেত্রে মহিলারা অনেকটা পিছিয়ে আছেন সেই ক্ষেত্রে পুরুষরা কিন্তু যথেষ্ট এগিয়ে আছেন এবং বিভিন্ন ভাবে তাদেরকে টাকা রোজগার করার পরও ঘরের ক্ষেত্রে পরিবারে ফিরে যাওয়ার পর এন্ড অফ দা ডেতে ওদের নানান ধরনের শারীরিক এবং মানসিক অত্যাচারের শিকার হতে হচ্ছে যদি সারাদিন পরিশ্রম করার পর একটা মেয়ে যখন বাড়িতে ফিরে যাবে দিনের শেষে টাকা রোজগারের পরও যদি তার শারীরিক এবং মানসিক অত্যাচারের জায়গা থেকে যায় সেখানে এম্পাওয়ারমেন্ট একটা বিগ কোয়েশ্চেন হয়ে চলে আসে তাহলে আমি কোথায় সিদ্ধান্ত নিচ্ছি এখন আমরা বলবো আপনারা অনেকেই কোয়েশ্চেন রেজ করতে পারেন তাহলে ম্যাডাম আপনি পাগল হয়ে গেছেন আমরা আপনি ডিলিট করছেন এখানে এত এত কে আমরা সবাই শাড়ি পরে জামা পরে বসে আছি আমরা সবাই অনেক কিছু জানি আমরা কি আধুনিক হইনি আবার হয়েছি কোন মেয়েরা দুবা ঘন্টা চারটে হয়েছে ফ্যামিলি ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড দেখুন তুমি হয়েছো তোমার ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড দেখুন আপনি হয়েছেন আপনার ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড দেখুন যখন কথা বলবো আমরা ক্ষমতায়ন নিয়ে তখন সার্বিক কথা বলবো সার্বিক কথা বলতে গেলে এখনো এক তৃতীয়াংশ মেয়েরা রয়ে গেছে কৃষ্ণ বিবরে আচ্ছন্ন এটা বাংলা ভাষা মানে অন্ধকারে আচ্ছন্নের জায়গায় রয়ে গেছে সেখানে দাঁড়িয়ে এম্পাওয়ারমেন্টটা ক্ষমতায়ন প্রক্রিয়াটা একটা বিশাল বড় প্রশ্ন চিহ্ন হয়ে
হয়ে দাঁড়ায় তাহলে প্রশ্ন এখন যে আমরা কি করে ক্ষমতার কেন্দ্রে আসতে হবে প্রথম যে বিষয়টা সেটা হচ্ছে শিক্ষা এখন প্রশ্ন হচ্ছে কোন শিক্ষা কোন শিক্ষা যে শিক্ষাটা আমরা পাচ্ছি সেটা তো রবীন্দ্রনাথের ভাষায় রবীন্দ্রনাথকে ছেড়ে আমি কথা বলতে পারবো না রবীন্দ্রনাথের ভাষায় ছাঁচে ঢালা শিক্ষা এই শিক্ষা থেকে আমাদের বেরিয়ে আসা সম্ভব নয় and this is a joint paper by me and panchi haloy and i am presenting the paper the topic is impact of assam skill development mission on entrepreneurship in assam <clears throat> the introduction there is a saying that business runs the world and it is true because huge investors are done by the entrepreneurs but for that skill development is very necessary skill development refers to the productive capabilities acquired through trainings and learnings in formal informal and non formal way 
skill development is the process of identification of the skills gap in youth, providing skilling training and employment benefits to them. After successfully taking skill development trainings, a person can be an entrepreneur. Because of lack of skill education training, we have seen less skilled labor in our country, and accordingly, self employment rate is also low. <laughs> The Assam government has also given importance on creating employment and promoting entrepreneurship through skill development of youths under the direction of the Skill Employment and Entrepreneurship Department. The Assam Skill Development Mission was established in 2015 and op uh, operation began in 2017 to meet 1.50 lakh, 1.50 lakh youth skilling target. The main vision is building the skill of unemployed young people and providing high quality training leads to fulfill employment. The mission also aims to formulate 24,000 jets which enhances the global competitiveness of Assam. Mobilize 30 lakh youths, established 1,000 training centers, placed 2,000 overseas, registered 7.2 lakh youths, trained 6 lakh youths. This paper focus on enrollment, training, placements across the selected districts and sectors in Assam. Next. Here are the reviews of literature. Due to a short time, I'm coming to directly objective. Uh, significance. Objectives. Uh, we have taken two objectives to highlight the numbers of candidates enrolled, trained, and placed across the selected district and sectors to study the significant difference between male and female on placement methods and materials. We have used uh, uh, secondary data and data taken from Assam Skill Development Portal, ASDM, from dated 1st January 2017 to 31st March 2023. The sample of 10 districts and 9 sectors were selected uh, purposefully based in highest number of enrollments and placements. The test was used to see the significant difference between gender and placement across the district. Here the table number one. The total number of candidates enrolled in ASDM in the selected sectors from the selected districts. The study depicted that there is a total of 48,621 candidates enrolled in Assam Skill Development Mission under the scheme then uh, placement linked skill development training programs. 47,911 candidates were trained, 47,189 were passed, and 18,308 were placed out of the selected districts and sectors. The study shows that enrollment are not equal over the district. In some districts, the number of candidates enrolled are high, and in some districts, it is low. And thus, uh, table number one showing that. In the table number one, indicates that the total number enrollment, uh, total number of enrollment of uh, combined male and female candidates of ten districts. The ten districts are accordingly. Borpeta, Tirang, Dorang, Dibrugar, Kamruk M, Kokrajhar, Nogao, Nitwar, Kinshukia, Udalgul. And the nine sectors agriculture, construction, apparel, electronics, IT sector, media and entertainment, textile, retail, tourist, uh, tourist and uh, hospitality. The study found that with district-wise comparison, taking all the sectors, the numbers of enrollments uh, is high in Tinsukia district, is about 7,301, and low in Sirang district, uh, 1,285 across the, all the districts. With sector-wise comparison, taking all the district, the number of enrollment is high in electronics, that is 1,230, and low in tourism and hospitality across the, all the sector is about 3,115. The enrollment number of Chirang district in, uh, in sectors, namely media, entertainment, textile, retail, and tourism, hospitality, and Kukaza uh, district in retail sector is zero, which means there has been no enrollment taken yet. 
A total number of 48,621 candidates, including both male and female, have enrolled under this mission and scheme named Placement Link Skill Development Training Program. From this, we can say that if the, the enrollment, enrollment students get less and employment in different sectors, then there is a scope of enrollment reduction. Now in table number two, we have seen that the total number of candidates trained under ASDM in the selected sectors from selected district. It indicates that the uh, total number enrollment of combined male female candidates of uh, 100 district and nine, nine sectors in Assam skill development missions. The study found that district wise uh, comparisons taking all the sectors. Candidates were in, in high in, in Sukia 7566 and low in Tirang district 1933 across all the district. With sector wise comparison, taking all the districts, the number of candidates trained in high in electronics that is 13,502 and low in tourist and hospitality across the across all the sectors. Uh, about okay, the number of candidates trained in Tirang district in sectors namely textile, retail, and tourism, hospitality, and of Kukrajar district in retail sector is zero, which means there is. Uh, there has been no training yet. A total of 1,311 candidates, including both male and female, are trained under this mission and scheme named Placement Link Hill Development Training Program. The candidates who were uh, trained and had passed the examination were eligible for placement. The number of candidates placed in the, all the sectors and all the districts were not even. Some districts and uh, sectors had high number of candidates placed, whereas some as low. The number of male and female candidates placed separately in different sectors and uh, different districts and sectors. With district-wise comparison and taking all the sectors, the number of uh, candidates high in Udalgiri district, 2,996 and low in Nogao district, that is 1,327. Again, with the sector-wise comparison, uh, uh, taking all the districts, the number of candidates high in electronics, 5,361 5, sectors and low in IT, that is 984. The total number of female players in high in uh, Udalgiri district, that is 1,702 and law in Kukraza district 687. The total number of males in high, the total numbers of males in high in Udalgiri district, that is 1,294 and now Noga, Noga district 261. The total number of candidates getting trained were 51,300. Uh, 311, whereas the total number of candidates getting placed were 18,298, and there is a gap of 33,013. 33, uh, With the help of the uh, T test, it was found that T test next, next, yes. With the help of the uh, student T test, it was found that the T test is minus 3.502 which is negative not significant at 0 0.876 with 0 0.01 significance level which is shown in the table number four and showing in this uh, ppt it indicates that there is no significant difference in mean ranks of placement of male and female across the selected district and sectors it may say it that uh, difference between male and female taking all the sector selected district and sectors were found to have placement at the same level. Now coming to next. Okay. Conclusion, the training program by ASDM has benefited both male and female youth across different districts. Lack of time, timely financial assistance and other support by the mission is pulling back the tennis from establish of new business. Skilled workers can con contribute 
well to the development to different sectors which in turn will help towards the rise of entrepreneurship in the country more effort should be given from the government to avail more placement facilities some of the districts and sectors do not have enrollments so this matter can be looked into the fill the gaps professional measures can be taken by advertisement seminars coaching hoarding next next and here's the references thank you thank you so sorry so can i now request dr parunita basito for the presentations the topic is role of women and women empowerment very uh, good uh, afternoon to all of you and i am very grateful to have here uh, sabunti ma'am uh, sabrika ma'am and uh, respected rajmondal sir uh, because i am a student in the department of economics in the assam university so i am very grateful uh, so uh, so i am presenting a paper and uh, i am very much honored to the uh, convener and the co convener suchitra ma'am and the anup sir Uh, so my topic is uh, role of women and the women empowerment okay so if we discuss the role of women what is the role of women we can discuss before before we discuss the role of women uh, i would like to uh, discuss it is related to the empowerment also and i i uh, know ma'am sagarika ma'am is very much well uh, 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 about this field and uh, i don't know i have uh, justified in the paper or not so if we talk about the women empowerment uh, i think there are five points we have to discuss there are need five points we have to discuss it means uh, making women independent it is the most important the making women independent and next one is the it also promotes women safety and security it is very much important in our safety and security and uh, third one is that to take their decisions in the to take their decisions and fourth one is that it equalizes the share of women's position and uh, that means it equalizes the share of women with the men and fifth one is that women empowerment is necessary for the development and if we uh, discuss the role that means women performs the role of every we, we can know this is the wife partner daughter dispatcher organizer administrator director recreator nowadays economist now it is uh, mother then uh, grandmother health officer artist with everything but it is in the family but in the same time apart from it women plays a key role in the socio economic development of the society women are need to be loved and not to be understood this is the world of the oscar wilde and women are known to be the symbol of spirituality strength love sacrifice and the role of in today's world is changing it is changing significantly but in the women's economic uh, empowerment statistics that is in the women's economic st uh, statistics in india research indicates the present contribution of the women in the gdp remains at the 18% in the 2021 and india's female labor labor force participation was 23% and one of the lowest in the world as well as below the one average of the 47% but in the covid 19 crisis covid 19 period has further hit the already tormenting gap gap so much of women's work is primarily undercounted eclipsing their accurate participation and contribution of the economy so before we uh, discuss this point i have just categorized the uh, this topic in the just uh some sub things that is first one is the introduction second is significance of women's role in the society then how women's role society has changed then modern roles of the women gender and poverty conflicts and women and the sustainable development and women's role in production earning and the person contribution and i am just working with it, that paper and i have just collected only ma'am only some secondary data and when i collecting the data i am just uh, when i collecting the primary data i have just chosen the south asia 
that is the see this is of the product i have uh, just prepared i'm just working with that paper so in the next yes significance of women's role in the society the main functions of women's role in the household are the transmission and implementation of the cultural values and principles and beliefs to their children and women's position in the society focus on human growth and social justice and influence of the political economy this is only i can just a significance of the women's role in the society and how women's role in society has changed now how it is changed in the day by day because few are women staying at home and few are women few are children born to the families more women in colleges that means there are some that are second i am this primary and secondary data and primary data i am not collecting so changes in law and the enforcement of the existing law involving such issues as the reproductive rights sexual harassment and domestic violence changes in the workforce and 34% of the women work outside the same in the in the in the 1950s and now it is changing it is the 60% in the today next one is the in the modern women that means modern women has started caring for the social emotional cultural religious and the economic needs next slide then modern roles of a woman modern roles of a woman that is a woman is a companion partner helpmate and comrade of the man and she sacrifices her personal happiness i am also sacrificing before i am going to the seminar i have cooked and then all the family i think about the family member ami amar barir kotha chinta kori tar jonno barir kotha chinta korar shoy amar amar kore ashi age ami khetam na তারপরে দেখলাম আমার হেলথটা ডিটোরিয়েট করতে লাগলো তারপরে আমি ভাবি ওরাও তো খাবে আমি আমার থেকে যাই সো ইট ইজ রিলেটেড ইফ মাই হেলথ ইজ গুড দেন আই উইল টেক কেয়ার অফ দ্য ফ্যামিলি সো শি উইল রিলি স্ট্রেস এন্ড দ্য টেনশন অফ হার হাজবেন্ড ইয়েস এন্ড সেট স্ট্যান্ডার্ডস অফ মরালিটি এন্ড মেইনটেইনস পিস এন্ড অর্ডার এন্ড সো ম্যাডাম ইট ইজ ওয়ান ইন ওমেন ইন ইন্ডিয়া স্ট্যাটিস্টিক্স এন্ড ফ্যাক্টস দিস ইজ আই হ্যাভ জাস্ট কালেক্টেড ইন দ্য a uh, secondary data and it is source is the statistical research department it is it is mistakenly max it is march 10 2023 share of women in the managerial position it is 14.6% share of women in the leadership role in the educational sector it is 30% share of c shared by women in the local government it is 44.4% and share of women who own a mobile phone this is very important share of women in the mobile phone it is 54% either it is smartphone now it is it is smartphone and uh, next one is the share of women who own a bank account it is also very good now you get the different types of uh, government schemes also introduced there so i women that own mother chochona then uh, there are different types of 78.6 uh, 6% and according to the latest family health survey and fhs according to the latest Family health service released by the Indian government recently. There are now 1,020 women for every 1,000 men, and this is the Ministry of Health and Education. It is also population. Is next, next slide. Then, then I have to prepare gender and poverty conflicts. Gender and the poverty conflicts. Next, uh, well, gender-based analysis. very much important and uh, this is the development of the economics the opposition of women is also noticeable in the standard which are the economic development and gender is closely related to the social and economic analysis and it is complementary to the variable of class ownership occupation in terms of the family status and like that and i have just come to bring you jan omar to send his book it is also i just uh, in the end and next is the women and the sustainable development and if we go through the women and the sustainable development women's empowerment is a key factor for achieving the sustainable economic growth and sustainable development depends on a equitable distribution of resources for today and for the future and it cannot be achieved without gender equality without the gender equality and sustainable development is broadly defined as development which meets the requirements of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs next is the sustainable development should be based on a balanced economic growth and price stability a highly competitive social market economy aiming at the full employment and next one is viewed in a broad spectrum women have played a vital role in the global environmental movement next is the contribution of women's role in the production 
and earnings and perceived contributions. So, when women get better opportunity to earn something to gainful activities, and beyond household, their earning would help the family, and then social status would also be improved. Social status would also be improved if women earn would help the family, and then social status would also be improved. And the women, those who are outside the employers, the employment would enhance the overall command of the household, and that is the family entitlement of the given family entitlement. The involvement of women in any productive activities and the earnings from the outside are of obvious importance of female educated households without adult men. This is, this is the book review where we can use it. It was in the 1978 and this is in the 1985, that book review. And the productive and earning activities of the women can help the development of the family and improve their status and position both in the family and the society as a whole. Next is the conclusions and the main findings. And if you want to think about the women empowerment, in the true sense, there is a crying need for the elimination of the male security and patriarchal mindset. Also, women need to be given equal opportunity for equal opportunities for education and employment without any sense of discrimination and self-reliance in earning for economic independence, sorry, in independence, freedom to think and behave, freedom of marriage, self-decision in joyous to their parents, accepting new values of life, and many more things enter into the women's life in the society. And empowering women helps to create a more just and equitable society for the everyone. And health and the well-being, which is very much important, health and the well-being and women's empowerment is also important for promoting health and the well-being. And when women have access to education and health care, they can better take care of themselves and their family also. Thank you. Thank you, Pamukita, for your spiritual deliberation. So may I now request uh, Mr. Abdul Jalil Chaudhry to make his presentation, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Respected uh, Mrs. Parson of the City Legal Session, uh, my uh, law colleague, Mr. Kalesh Sharma, my esteemed colleague, different participants from different colleges, and my beloved students. Uh, today, I'm going to present the paper, the startup seminar uh, organized by the Department of Commerce and Economics, Commerce College. The uh, caption of my paper is Emerging Scenario of Startup Business in Assam Issue Challenges and Government Policy Initiative for Entrepreneurship Development. So what I should say, uh, from last uh, two days, I was witnessing many uh, good papers, seminar proceedings, uh, as I associated with this seminar. Uh, the first and most important point which comes to our mind, uh, why start a business? The clear-cut answer is unemployment. And uh, in this context, to solve this burning unemployment problem, as you know, the BDI in 2015 and 2016 initiated this particular concept of startup business. Yes, no doubt, in our country and in our state or in the northeastern region, we have entrepreneurship development institute, uh, many academic institutes, IIT, IIIT, NIT, universities. Uh, various uh, technical institute like CK in Guwahati. Uh, now, what government is feeling right now that the, all these institutions to materialize this particular startup project in India and in different states, the role of academic institution is very, very pertinent, number one. And uh, in terms of uh, presentation, if I should say in introduction, as I have said, uh, slide is there. 
Uh, even in the mail, it is given to Vishal also. No problem, I, if it is not there, I will be able to explain. So, in introduction, as I have told you, that the first question is why start out? Answer is unemployment. To reduce the gap between the employment and unemployment, if you know the unemployment is a very multiple effect in our country. Lacks of students apply for jobs, few of them get the job, and most of them become <coughs> unemployed, jobless, right? So, in the objective, I have uh, uh, designed this like this conceptual framework of startup to find out and analyze the role of education institution to develop a startup business in Assam, to highlight the challenges and demands of startup business in Assam, and to highlight the startup policy. 2017 of government of Assam and its implementation for development of projects for upcoming entrepreneurship. My my interest uh, in this paper is mainly to motivate my beloved students. If you have a passion here, passion hearing, I'm sure you will get some sort of benefit, and uh, only then I will feel that my effort is uh, some sort of uh, contribution that uh, yield from this paper. So, uh, in the objective text in the conceptual framework, as I told you, that startup means the action or process of setting something in motion. A startup company is a newly formed business, in particular, momentum behind it, based on perceived demand. So, the thing is this a person, when he will go for startup, he first of all must think to his come to mind what may be his idea, generation or the innovation, the product must have local demand, perceived demand, and only he will be able to materialize his startup business. This is about the conceptual framework, go to next. Eligibility criteria for startup business. What a person to go for startup, what sort of criteria he must fulfill, you see? The company to be formed should be a limited liability partnership a private limited company or a partnership firm. It should be a new firm or existing firm, not older than seven years, and even turnover of the company not exceeding 25 crores. The firm must work towards the innovative schemes, development, commercialization of new products. The firm should not be an expansion of existing business. Uh, let's uh, continue. So, startup scheme in India, as you know, our foreign minister always emphasized this particular scheme. For startup, Atmanivar Bharat Air Innovation Challenge, Autumn Innovation Mission, Startup Seed Fund Scheme, Startup India Initiative, EVS Portal, Software Technology Park, STP, Dairy Processing and Infrastructure Development Fund. So these are the schemes in our country. But most important thing is, as I told you, that I focus on uh, startup policy of Government of Assam 2017. You see here some important point. Uh, these are the, some definitions. These are not the definition of startup, but these are some of the definition of startup policy government of Assam 2017. What is this entity? Here entity means a company which is formed registered under Companies Act 2013 or a partnership firm according to India Partnership Act 1932 or a limited liability partnership in 2008. And regarding the startup, here startup we mean that the startup initiative that has been enacted by the government of India. And this startup initiative is in the form of new startup business, a new innovative business, a new idea generation type of business. And regarding incubator, here incubator means according to this policy, it is a center. What we can market incubator, a like a big arrangement like theater or like arrangement where all sorts of facilities, training facilities, and concept and idea generation development facilities, IT facilities, quality control type training facilities, research and development type of facilities will be available. That here we call incubator or market incubator. DIBP, here it means according to the policy that district industries and promotion 
district industry police promotion and policy uh, and means department of industry of the government of india and university here we mean the university that has been constituted under the lcc very central university state university or a deep university so another is uh, most important definition given in this particular policy that should be uh, this is very most important uh, last one is very most important why i should say my some startup id it means if someone want to choose a startup business he or she must acquire this uh, my asam startup id if he or she want to get recognition his startup in the state of assam only uh, let me next please uh, this is the senior ulc uh, most important a uh, senior of startup business in assam uh, you know though we are, there is a uh, very much a dogram on you know human trial like situation about startup 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 Yes, it is a headway. There is a considerable headway, no problem. But in our state, the picture in the, in the yesterday, our one the research person, Mr. Jawadi Kusabi, a Tamilnadu Assamdaudu University. Uh, I got him. I got him. I, I got from him the data actually. I was not uh, that data available with me. That there are 640 startups in Assam, and out of that, 40 percent belongs to women. This is most important. And regarding the present senior UAC, uh, this is a digital end. Uh, this is the founder. Uh, I will uh, uh, give your attention. I will give your attention, uh, my honourable participants. Uh, I will only uh, discuss here about the name of startup industry or the activity. The rest part you will take care of yourself. Uh, I mean, one, one, two, three, and four. You take care of yourself. You see. Just I have to highlight the name of activity. All right, uh, this one e-learning, uh, e-learning. This is a, a digital marketing uh, way. And three, uh, this particular e-learning startup, they offer you know three types of uh, training, uh, uh, three type of uh, digital uh, marketing training course. That is for course. That is foundation for four months, advanced course for six months. And professional uh, course for four months. So those are young and energetic uh, executive or the graduated people between 18 to 22 or 25. They can come up for marketing activities, all right? To develop the marketing the marketing skill, they will give you the training. And for that, you will have to go for this particular courses. Uh, the second is your red uh, red level. Uh, in this, uh, uh, what is this activity? You see, the company has now three web-based project. One is called Selfisher, Effortfany, and Paridhan. Uh, so, uh, Selfisher, it is a taxi service uh, uh, startup, and Effortfany, it is a uh, 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 e-commerce type, and uh, Paridhan, it is an NGO who sells you know, at least products, at least dress, dress products in Guwahati. As I told you, the startup has a considerable headway, no doubt, but you know, this has been developed within the Guwahati and its peripheral area. Not that the picture is very bright or it may be all over the state. This is not like that. As you know, the Guwahati is the prime center of uh, the doorstep of the uh, in, in the Northeast India and also international trade center. So it is uh, developing there, no doubt. It is very much developing there. And uh, next is your uh, regarding uh, Oladas. This is a manufacturing sector. Uh, they uh, produce, you know, Arduino boards, interfacing boards, connecting wire, sensor modulus, automatic down task, and uh, some many um, uh, robotic like uh, uh, dietics, photocopying, like quality control, research and development. This type of activity is done by this startup. Uh, next is your. Uh, yes, uh, Activex Media, that is uh, in the, the number 10, that is, uh, no, no, a pick and bear, yes, done by Bhatra, this is a food delivery, and you know, the time is the constraint, time is the problem nowadays, you know, those are very, very busy people, alright, 
official, non official, I think you take, or maybe at home also, you know, timely ordering of food is very important. And they are doing this particular startup. They may, in a faster way, they can they deliver the foods within the Guwahati. And the people are very much choosing this particular startup. And their business is also very nice. Uh, next is your uh, Blue Whale, is a transportation company, as you know. <coughs> uh, they give you know uh, transportation service at a low cost uh, uh, to the people. Uh, and people can get this service in a hassle free way in a busy city uh, like Guwahati. Uh, and next is your number uh, 10. That is about the uh, marketing. So this uh, 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 in this particular, this is digital solutions to the clients like strategic marketing, branding, packaging, customer design, uh, like it. And eleven is your promotion uh, of fables. Uh, uh, this is online shopping portal. Uh, now it is what we this is like a of it. And it is designed like Snapdeal, uh, and they compare the price of the sales products in the best of the customers, according to the customer who produce products. And what are the products in this particular And last one is your, uh, last one, last, last, see your 12, is go away. Uh, yes, that is way.com. So in way.com, this is a, a software company in Guwahati. Uh, with uh, 20 plus uh, uh, years of experience, reliable technology portal, and uh, it's, uh, they have a very good market. That is, really a vast experience of startup, or uh, they capture, uh, you know, big big issues like OHC or in the petroleum in industry, like that. Not only that, this particular uh, also gave uh, uh, various uh, web development of uh, college universities. Um, when, when like they to uh, you know minimize them their problem of processing of like admission etc etc and uh, another is uh, that is a SMO mobile web development dev this web dev is yes yes I'm going to finish so these things are there I'm going to next after <coughs> so startups in, uh, in any India these are the scheme taken by the government of India to develop the startup in the northeastern region and you have seen uh, to next step. Uh, so, policy initiative by the government of Assam, uh, the objective is like this to provide required and enable startup in Assam to develop mechanism and problem solving, answer of entrepreneurship to citizens, to the associated startup business, like that. I go to next step. Uh, I go to do. Government of Assam implemented the, the initiative for startup uh, like this. This is the really important part. Uh, it's how are you going to have a digital application subsidy to 50%. Lease rental subsidy 50%, power subsidy 50%. Regarding patent, you know, if, if someone can develop patent and if you have to register the patent, you will get 100% subsidy. Every cost of patenting, one will get 100% subsidy. It's a very important point. And regarding uh, the uh, challenges of startup, you see, failure to plan, plan should be very, very uh, detailed one, a lack of demand, marketing activities should be done very carefully. Um, and securing funding, this is a problem. Resource of types of funding often where it is one more chance for that. Go to next, please. Hiring the right people, entrepreneurs must look for the people uh, to have value that value. Otherwise, you know, if people are not valued, value, you will destroy your startup. You will try to, you know, rather suppress you, what you can say. Uh, next to your. So these are some of the suggestions here development for the people as well can be. Root and expansion of the new and existing business. Emphasis should be given to clear gain from uh, uh, to, uh, to, gain, uh, to the giant firm that can provide more jobs. Important small business can play greater role. Small is beautiful. Those uh, small is painful. There is a saying like that. Uh, uh, I, I mean uh, for three more points of view, just to go to break is uh, 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 that is a uh, uh, small firm has an age over for farms with the construction of the You know, the big firm there, if they require they, you know, get a shatai will be a retail spend. And some of the people will uh, leave the job. <coughs> but this is not happening in the small business. So this is the advantage. Uh, awareness, and most important is the awareness and motivation. Most important, I will say, 
In my whole paper, what I have understood, and what I have understood from the last two days, that is, awareness and motivation is the big problem to go for the startup. Because why I visited to paper preparing paper in Kolkata district that uh, let me have uh, some primary data. I visited uh, uh, this district industrial commerce center. I contacted my general manager. I was also guest of this particular seminar, inaugural uh, session of the day. Uh, I asked sir, uh, what is the position of startup in our district? How many students, how many candidates, or how many aspirants they are coming to you uh, to have a startup to start a startup? Sir said that I mean, it was disappointed. I could say there is no one, but there was one. He developed a new model of you know uh, this uh, uh, what you could do to Tom Tom uh, three wheelers uh, very better vehicle. All right, one has been designed uh, an innovative idea, but he is not getting license. Whenever he will go. Not so much educated, but he has the idea, he has the knowledge and innovation. Uh, so he goes to the dealership, he says, hey, You just produce and you give us. He goes to the company, okay, he says, You produce and you give us. We will say, It means market, they, they, they give us, they, 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 they want to uh, give the marketplace, marketing place to this particular people. So he is the one person, only one person, as we have advice from this general manager of the SEC. So my every appeal to the students will be that. You see, uh, job, 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 there is no job everywhere. So, to have a job, you must stand by on your own feet. And today, I am uh, telling you that yesterday, our uh, uh, vice president came to the uh, University in the 11th location. There, he also emphasized that upcoming youth for 2047, you must be a national builder, provided. You will be stand by on your own feet, and for that, uh, it is very very important that we should think entrepreneurship, startup as our career. This should be the option for our next generation because government is clearly saying, "I am not in position to give you job to all and no job for all." So some of you must come under the purview of this startup. So. I tried my level best with the time for staying to give you something if uh, you think I have given something, yes, uh, I will be little successful. And if there is a failure, I <laughs> think this is what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chaudhary, for your insightful presentation. So we have another Presenter, is he here? Dr. P. S. Das is, is not here. So with that, we have come to the end of this technical session. In all, we have had we have, we have had six paper presentations. Now, when we uh, write a research paper, often we are asked to give keywords, and those keywords help us to define, capture the idea of the paper. So if I have to give keyword words to this presentation, the words that came up were youth entrepreneurship, women entrepreneurship, skill development, employment, and women's empowerment. Now, women's empowerment is something that is close to most of our hearts, hearts of most people, and interdisciplinary papers are always invited and are welcome. But then today's session particularly is on startups. So we are not really entirely concerned with women's empowerment, but there is no denying the fact that in most cases, other forms of women empowerment come through economic empowerment. And it is economic in, in, when it comes to providing economic empowerment to, the, to our women, the role of startups cannot be denied. And so this actually brings us to the fore that when we have a discussion on startups at the state level, at the district level, or at the all India level, we cannot leave out women. And we need to have a women centric policy. I'm focusing on women, we are large benches. You know, I'm a very strict teacher. You know, my, my students, even my area students, are scared of me actually. Okay, and you all are, I think, graduate students. Yeah, so I don't like, whether you like my lecture or not, or my speech or not, just be patient for two minutes. I know you are moody. Okay, so. But because I'm focusing on women, because there have been so many papers and the, uh, on women entrepreneurship, and 
this is something that has come up recurrently. Do we need to actually frame our startup policy around women? And it has to be women-centric, well, women-centric startup policy because in India we have the lowest women work participation rates in the world. The work participation rate in India amongst women is only 20, which means that out of every hundred women who are in the working age of 15 to 64, only 20 are working, 80 are not working. Not working means they're not even looking for employment. So when we're talking about the 5 trillion economy, can you imagine how much of GDP we are losing out? Because 50% of our population is not interested in working. So when we say 40% of the startups are being run by women, statistics cover a lot of cover up a lot of things. We are missing out on the figures that are actually not contributing to the GDP. So we need a women-centric startup policy. And so, and uh, in the recent budget, the, the proposal looked beautiful. Well, I don't know what, but ultimately everything for 50 years, for 100 years, we have been trying to do so many things. Ultimately, what you are able to accomplish depends on how well we implement it on the ground. But in the last uh, budget, there was a there was a discussion and there was a proposal from the finance minister that over the last three years, the government has been working at the grassroots in order to connect at least one woman from every poor family to a central group. So that, that was the first round of the work that was done. And now they want that those self-help groups should be designed in the form of women's status. So the role of the government can, uh, cannot actually be denied when it comes to giving the guidance as to what is the proper startup for a particular area because what is you know, suitable for Kamrup Metropolitan is not what is suitable for Karimganj or Kachari. So there has to be a specific local policy, women-centric policy, not a gender, you know, a policy that gives equal opportunities to both genders. We want male entrepreneurs, we want female entrepreneurs as well. And so that is the that is the way forward. And we have had good deliberations. Madam also gave a very good presentation in the morning on women's empowerment and women's inclusion and how to break the glass ceiling. The glass ceiling also exists in the remote corners of the of the country. And probably that is where it is difficult, most difficult to get to. So before we end the session, I know everyone is hungry, we are, we are running late, but then I want some comments from the audience. Any questions on any of the papers that have been presented? No? Yeah. Uh, it's not a query actually. So whenever Abdul Jalil sir was delivering his lecture, in one slide uh, he showed that so regarding the terms and conditions to become or to start a startup businesses. And in particular slide uh, sir showed that so to become or to start a startup business, the minimum numbers will be 25 crore. At the same time, the duration of the period to become that particular recognition it is seven years. But whatever might have limited knowledge in this particular subject, I found that as per the DPIIT, the DPIIT is the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internet Trade, Government of India. It is the notary agency formed by Government of India and what is since 2009. And as per the guideline, to become the startup business, the minimum period should be 10 years, number one. And secondly, it should not be more than 100 crore rupees. So in this, it is not question. It is like uh, confusion. Which one is the correct or incorrect? So in this context, the results are clear when done. Uh, I will be managing it actually. So, so actually, you are talking about uh, yeah, 2019, yeah. right? So, so, so you, you, you might be correct because I am talking about 2017. So there is a much improvement in the. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Any comments on the papers? Yes. Oh, sorry, sir. Just one minute. I, I, I uh, uh, actually, this is not a. Uh, uh, some extraordinary comments I want to make. This, your uh, observations, your uh, introductory lecture actually in line with my thought actually this corroborates my opening statement when I presented my paper in the morning. Some of you, you know, 
So I want to just, uh, you know, other side of the story, just I want to highlight one thing only uh, regarding the start of business. We want to copy and paste. This is the 19th, so from the preliminary study, I have come to know that 1970s and 1980s, the concept of startup businesses in, uh, in developed countries, the Silicon Valley is emerged. And after so many years, so many decades actually, and uh, the government is trying to re redirect our thought, Atmanilvar Bharat and all these things, they are already existent. Redirect our thought, you know, what is the difference in the, you know, uh, you kind of this small business, then startup business, incubation, training centers. The, this thing was a wrong ago. Is a you know celebrated you know uh, you know economist professor Sean Peter. I admire him it most. He's a very creative you know that demo capitalism, socialism, and democracy. His book is well known book. Creative destruction. The professor. The morning I, I just uh, remember this recording while I, I was thinking for that that innovation theory of profit that creative cycle is always there. So why not India is you know uh, that stressing on the you know its own problems. Why always copy pasting and all these things? Because it's a regional variation. One of was showing the regional variation empirically. We all know these facts. All these things are you know staying in a, in in upper level and how and what is the success story of startups and all these things. So all these things are you know very you know kind of sky high thinking all these things. These are very, you know, yes, before you are exactly right. In fact, when I started my when I made my observations, I said that one size is not going to fit all, and we are we need local centric policies which are going to which will be suitable for our people and our local needs and our local demands. So when you talk about a startup that has that turnover of, what is the turnover requirement, sir, you just mentioned, to be qualified as a 25, 25 crores? No, so, man, uh, as per DITCT new regulation, 2019, which must be less than, less than 100 crores. Yeah, but even when you say that the turnover to be, to be recognized as a, turn, uh, as a startup, you need to have a turnover of around 100 crores. This means that this kind of business is not suitable for everyone. And when we talk about demographic dividend and the need to generate employment for our local youths, so it's clearly this is not the model that we can impose. Startup may be the theme, the central theme, but we need different, or different models of startup which are applicable to the village level, so that we have a village level startup which with a turnover of maybe 5 lakhs will be qualified enough to get a loan from some source and will be recognized as a village level startup. So that is what we cannot go by one rigid policy of defining a startup. Startup I think is a broad concept. It's a broad concept to give you the idea that where the employment in the next 10 years is going to come from or the next 15 years is going to come from. But we cannot have one unique definition of startup that will be applicable across the country. Another, sorry, another thing I want to make is very interesting. You see, just before you, you come to that, Dipon, you see, for so many years, the government of India has been dealing with what is a small scale industry and what is a tiny industry. Every time you have a new budget, this year from this year onwards, a tiny industry will be this with an investment of this. So it is the same continuation of the small scale industry and tiny industry given a new face and probably be given a new push because this is the time we have to make it happen. It will happen. If we miss the bus and then after 2047 we become an aging population and the scope of transformation to a high per capita income economy is gone forever. So now is the time to emphasize. Yes, there are so many things actually, so many things in a huge area. We, on the one hand, we are talking about industrial 4.0, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. then large business jams entering into local markets, huge threats to the local, you know, you know, in a small business. Yes. Yeah, it's we have to, you know, we, so many things here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, so that, this is again, I'm, this is see, I'm not, I'm not, to, I'm not here to defend anyone or anything. But if, if a problem exists. A solution has to be sought to it, has to be looked for it. So if you are saying that large scale businesses are entering into the 
into the scene and they are threatening the small scale enterprises. And if ultimately who gives the security to the small scale in them? It's the government. Local government has to provide the security to small, uh, small employment and small businesses. So there has to be a system of tie-ups. So if someone is selling seeds under their seed, ultimately who will be the seed supplier? It has to come from the grassroots. So there has to be a tie-up with the higher large. I don't see the debate as you know that this is a watertight compartment. This is a field reserve for the large scale sector. This is a field reserve for the small scale sector. What I mean is that if you want to make it happen, there has to be integration, vertical integration in the production side. And that again, I say, has to be on the basis of local resources, local skills, especially when, you're, when we are sitting in a place like Barad Valley. For a very long time, we have been uh, talking about actist, lobbyist. There's tremendous potential. Silja is said to be at the up, at the center of what transformation can take place when it comes to trading with Southeast Asian nations. So, given this, if this really happens, that this policy really happens, I think there's tremendous scope for this entrepreneurship development to be tied up to the overall active yeah. policy. But are we getting on the serious? That is the question. So we are so we are now at the end of our sessions. Uh the put here, sir. Uh, we would like to request you to give your uh, Sir, you are deeply. Uh, or the participant present now. But I think there is another session for the report. Is it last week? No, no. Whether you will present now or in the next session? I think in the So in the civil there is something like report as report. <coughs> that was from Arthur. Uh, thank you, Madam. Thank you, all the participants and all the all the presenters and all all, all those who are present on this uh, session. And today we saw that there are uh, seven papers. I think so, oh, six. Yeah. So we have seen six papers, and uh, I'll 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 briefly point out only the main points that I have seen. I have noted uh, for each one, each each paper. The first paper was of role of microfinance in women entrepreneurship and empirical study, presented by Atul Kumar Pal. But there only because I wanted to clarify to Atul Kumar Dole also that whether I had a confusion there, uh, like the income, whether the income, the relation between income and loan, whether uh, this income was substantially, did you find any substantial difference in income? Before taking loan and after taking loan, I, I found a contradiction there. Yeah. There is a little difference, but <clears throat> it is not significant enough. Not significant enough, but there is little difference. Yeah, because two statements actually made me confused in that. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, there, this uh, the paper studied the demographic profile, uh, the relationship between income and loan taken by the respondents. And survey method was employed where random sampling was used with 75 respondents from Ramkrishnanagar block. And there uh, you made a link between annual income and also the microfinance loan taken by the respondents. And there you say that there is no significant increase. No, if I'm right, there is no significant increase of annual income of respondents before and after taking loan. This is the finding, uh, uh, main finding of the paper, paper number one. Paper two, the youth entrepreneurship problems and prospects in Northeast India presented by uh, Mrs. Rajasri Dasgupta from Arkanagar College. And the paper highlighted, uh, highlighted basically the problems and prospects of youth entrepreneurship in that paper was observational in nature. There, the problems, problems were highlighted, the problems like low capital 
formation, lack of industrialization, in, inadequate infrastructure, lack of uh, market, lack of credit facility, lack of central health, all these are problems. And the prospects are like in different sectors. I think there are some prospects like in sericulture, handloom and handicraft, horticulture, floriculture, small scale and cottage industry. There are a lot of prospects. That is what the paper highlighted in paper number two. In paper three, there was uh, women empowerment and empowerment of women by Rupa Bhattacharji from R.K. Nagar College. The paper highlighted the processes and dimension of women empowerment with different examples and pointed out that patriarchy has not allowed women uh, the decision making power and there is there is also a discrimination at work in, in regard to wages and also at home with harassment so that is the discrimination found and also the paper suggested that we have to come back to human stream without gender discrimination that's what the paper highlighted uh, paper 4 is on the impact of Assam skill development mission on entrepreneurship in Assam uh, presented by Ms. Pansi Haloi presented on, on her behalf by another one Actually, the paper highlighted the importance of skill development and the role of training and thereby to bridge the gap in youth their skill and knowledge so paper highlighted to bridge the gap and the paper also presented the enrollment of youth in Assam skill development mission and the training by Assam skill development mission and but uh, after presenting this data it is found that there is a lack of financial assistance from after training by ASDM for new business there is no financial assistance as such maybe bigger and also suggest uh, that promotional measures uh, lastly the paper said that promotional measures should be taken up in the form of seminar and advertisement holding placement etc so that was paper number four and paper five is on the role of women and women empowerment by dr paramita dasgupta from mk Dev college the paper is basically based on secondary data where and where the paper highlighted the role of women from various dimensions such as family work modern women concept and their participation in different fields and the paper also talked of women and sustainable development role of women in production earning and perceived contribution and finally the paper said that women empowerment can be brought out by eliminating male superiority and patriarchal mindset uh, paper six that is on emerging scenario of startup business in assam issues challenges and government policy initiative for entrepreneurship development by dr abdul jalil Chaudhary of foreign girls college the paper basically highlighted the conceptual framework of startup business role of educational institution of startup business in developing startup business and also the eligibility criteria for startup business and uh, the paper also presented the scenario of startup business in Assam, startup projects in Northeast India, incentive schemes offered by government under startup scheme, and finally suggested some measure for improvement in startup business, such as awareness, motivational uh, program, and gap minimization. And finally, said that because whatever Sar was saying at the beginning came to the end like that is startup business is a way forward to reduce unemployment problem that was the conclusion actually and this is what is from my side my report on all the six papers and i don't know how far i, I have been able to present but uh, at least in four or five main points i like to capture the essence of all the six papers and thank you all of you for <laughs> Thank you, sir. So now we are now at the end of the session. I may now request HOD Commerce, Dr. Shubhan Shen, to felicitate our chairperson with the token view. A moment, now I'm done. And I may now request Sri Abdul Jalil Sir, Department of Commerce, Senior Most 
Faculty of the Department of Commerce to give vote of thanks for the session. And with this vote of thanks, we this will be the end of the all technical sessions, and then we'll go for the lunch. After the lunch, our principal son will arrive, and we'll go for the political session. And in the political session, I invite Dr. Shakuri Kade and Dr. Sarawati Naiti ma'am to remain in the political session as a chair. Thank you. So, respected business person of this technical session, Shagari Kapil from Assam University Department of Economics. Well, in spite of your busy schedule, you have given your consent that in, as a research person in the seminar. Well, you, in the very beginning, uh, highlighted the whole gamut of the startup business in India. You have eliminated us uh, with uh, giving. Uh, some specific issues related with startup and even at the end of the session yeah. the observation made by you is really uh, very much uh, immensely benefited to our students so our students will be benefited from the deliberation given by Shantri Kamen our honorable reporters Sri Kailash Sharma you also acted as a reporter and he noted all the things very lucidly in a very beautiful manner. I also thank, along with Shagari Kame, I also offer my vote of thanks to uh, Mr. Kaila Sharma. I express my gratitude and vote of thanks to my esteemed colleagues and other participants, paper presenters from different colleges of this very awesome. And I also put up thanks students Department of Economics to say a few words because it is all his efforts that we are today in this seminar. It is all his ideas and efforts. So I request him to say a few words. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is that I'm not a convener. I'm just a student. Uh, Shuchitra Lang is a convener and I like to remain as a student till the last day of my life. Thank you, Sri Madam. Actually, I want to say something, but right now I am speechless. There are so many reasons. But really, it is a very proud moment for me. It's been something different because I am so much lucky and honored that today I am here in front of my guy, in front of my supervisor, who is there every day in my academic career. The journey of my academic life started with when I am in 2015 in 21st July. And since then and onwards, I am with her and whatever I am doing right now because of the memory. Whatever I am writing the prefix before the, my name, it is because of only Madam. And that is why right now I am also more emotional. At the same time, I have no words to say something, how I can bring my sincere thanks to come to our college, to come to our department, despite our busy situation. So once again, Madam, is the heartfelt thanks from my heart as an individual person, as a department of technology members, as an organizing team, is a combined effort from all of us. Because of your constant support and guidance, we are in a position to organize us kind of particular thing. So Madam already spoke in the beginning of the session that I am a strict teacher, student only. But I feel 
Ma'am is strict not only to the teachers and the students only. Ma'am is very much strict towards the scholars to respect your ample and videos because I know personally to some extent about them. And because of the strictness, I am here today actually. If she gives some kind of relaxation, I will be not here today. That is my personal observation. So, without wasting any time, most that I am really feeling I have become so much useful right now. So, thank you to all our, each and every participants who are here with present the group online and offline group, especially in this particular session 6, which is about it, to write the number one, so 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 once again, thank you to each and everyone, thank you to all the participants, thank you to the actual uh, commerce also, thank you Sarandi Madam, thank you all our dignitaries who are coming here from different colleges, and once again, thank you to our Libya Village students. I already mentioned earlier also, this particular platform is helping Visa to give something a space to you also so that you can learn a lot from our presenters, that is the main thing. And we do hope that if, but, with the permission, if we are obviously in that coming days also, we will try to organize some kind of work, uh, such type of program so that in that level also, we need some kind of session for me so that the next program we can do some kind of better services. With the limited resources and time, final level, just if any unwanted information rises in this particular session, Madam, on the other department of students, we can only my colleges because to some extent they have disturbed you. So even after that, before we move to lunch, I just like to mention something about the HOB of the Department of Economics, Karimulaj College, who happens to be my scholar. I think you are very lucky to have a person who is so methodological, so hardworking like him. He is one of the best scholars that I have had in the sense that he has been. During the time that he was doing his PhD, when I needed any official paperwork, like I needed the PhD registration number of some other scholar, they would have, if I asked them, where is the PhD registration number? Oh man, the Baka throws it in the vector. Then you have to submit your form today. So I used to ring him up because they were registered at the same time and you know, he was so methodological, I know that if I call him, he will have everything filed up. So not only his own things, but others things also. And now that he is not there, I feel difficulty when it comes about going around with official things. But then he's very hardworking, methodological in approach, and a very humble and good person. So when you ask him to come, I ask him, you know, a working person, a working woman has no responsibilities than a working man, whether you agree or not. But then when he asked me to come, I could not say no because of that. So thank you. And uh, special thanks to all the organize to the organizers for organizing this. Someone he talked about some uh, difficulties or some shortcomings. I could not find any shortcomings, and I hope you will be organizing more such programs in the near future. One thing is just just one point with Madam. One thing is that we both are from the same school. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very close to you, Mark. <laughs>